everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, How to Attract and Hire a Rockstar Staff. I'm really excited to be your host today. My name is Jenny. I have Steve and Amanda here as well, and they'll be helping us out with any of your questions throughout the webinar. So in case you're not as familiar with Surefire and who we are, we're located in Northern Virginia, and our all-in-one marketing platform helps home contractor businesses drive visibility through all channels on the web, so they can continue to grow their business with ease. And our mission here is to educate businesses on a variety of topics to help you succeed and to help the industry grow. We wanna know who you are as well, so let us know where you're joining us from today. And you can do that by using the question box or the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. So a few quick reminders before we get started here. You will get the recording of this chat tomorrow and you can ask us any questions, make comments, et cetera, again, in the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. And because you're on the webinar with us right now, you have a chance to win one of the two Google Home Mini Smart Speakers that we'll be giving away at the end of the talk. So stay tuned until the end because that's when I'll be announced. So without being able to partner with Breakthrough Academy and welcome Benji Carlson back as our guest speaker. Uh, a couple weeks ago, he did a great presentation on the to getting out of the day-to-day -day in your trades business and he's back today to give another awesome presentation on attracting and hiring the right people for your business so I will pass it on over to Benji in just one second there you go cool thanks hey guys hope everyone is having a, a fabulous day um, yeah as Jenny said my name is Benji and I work with a really awesome company called Breakthrough Academy. I'll, I'll tell you guys a little bit more um, about us at the end of this session, but just kind of so you know a little bit and you know where this, this topic and this presentation comes from. Um, <clears throat> BTA is, is a, like a very high performance coaching program that's, that's purpose built for trades and construction businesses. We work with a ton of construction companies, lots of sub-trades, HVAC, plumbing, electrical. We work with painting companies, landscaping, anything to do with construction or home services, that's kind of our game. And so one of the, I mean, this probably shouldn't come as a surprise, but one of the biggest things that our members like really, really struggle with is putting together like a gangbusters team of employees. Like it's just super, super hard to find good quality people it's even harder to keep them. And so what I wanna go through today is like a very, very compact and quick version of what, like the systems that we implement with our members. I'm gonna go through this literally at lightning speed. So if you have questions, like let, use the chat box, let me know. I just wanna give you like the high level overview. And the one really good thing about this session is I'm, we're just gonna give away a ton of templates and resources and tools that are gonna make the implementation of these ideas a heck of a lot easier for you guys. So without further ado, let, like, let, let's get rolling. This is, this is how, to, how to attract and hire rockstar staff. Um, so the purpose for today, guys, I wanna give you the concepts and tools to find and attract the right people for your specific business. And what I want you to leave today with is the ability to create a job posting that sells to the right person. Sells is caps because that's kind of the key word and the key theme with, the, with this whole session is recruiting and interviewing, very, very similar process to marketing and sales. And we need to kind of treat it like that in our business if we want to get results from it. So that's one of them. Uh, I also want to give you guys a really awesome, super effective pre-screening system. Uh, it's for, we call it a conversion call, and it's it's that 20-minute phone call that you do with the prospect before you you sit down for a proper interview with them. So that's that's kind of the session for today. The agenda, um, we're going to create an ideal candidate profile. We're going to write an effective job posting based off of that ideal candidate profile, one that's going to attract the right kind of person. And then we're going to talk about how to pre-screen applicants and, again, sell them to the next step utilizing this conversion call template. So that's kind of the agenda for today. Um, I've done a lot of these talks and a lot of these workshops and you know at speaking events and in webinar format and these are just some thoughts that I've kind of collected just to give you around how to get the most out of this. So one thing I want you to keep in mind is like 
just focus on a few gold nuggets. I'm going to go over a lot of stuff, and it's not my expectation that you're going to have all this stuff down packed and fully implemented in your business by next month. I don't think that's realistic. So, like, pay attention to all the ideas and take notes and start to think, like, hey, what's, what's like, the easy, quick, fast nugget I can implement right away? And then, you know, Put the rest of the ideas on on the drawing board for next year or something like that. But don't don't feel like you need to get absolutely every aspect out, out of this. Um, don't get hung up on minutia. Means like if there's something that I talk about right now that like doesn't make sense for your business or you know you have your own way of doing it and like this isn't maybe as relevant. Like don't worry about that one specific detail and just focus on the bigger picture. Don't throw the baby out with the back the bathwater because there's some some really good information here even if one bit or piece of it doesn't apply to your specific situation right now. Um, would love to hear from you guys if you can share from your experience and, and engage with the material. This is kind of a funny topic, right? Like we've all had experience with um, some pretty painful staff. I think I think there's a, there's a lot of like common knowledge and common language and humor there. So um, just, you know, feel, feel free to use the question box, use the chat box to tell me um, what it's been like for you. And I'm going to be asking a few questions to you guys as we go through this. Um, so I'll be checking that to hear your responses as well. Okay, this is the really important thing that I need you to realize. What we're talking about today, like, which is basically building a recruiting funnel and then implementing like a properly structured interviewing process. That is one small piece in a much larger business system. Okay. So like, let's say that you become all of a sudden from this webinar, the best recruiter and the best interviewer in the world. And you're able to put together amazing teams. You still need, there's still other parts of your business that re that require systems and organization and thought there's financial planning. There's your organizational structure. There's the training of those new staff that you hired. There's, dealing with clients, there is strategic planning and long-term goal setting. Like there's so much stuff that goes into making a profitable, healthy, growing business. Recruiting and interviewing is but one of those pieces in a larger piece of machinery. So if you like this and the stuff that we go through today makes sense, you're like, hey, that's a good idea. I can totally use that. Um, we should probably keep talking because this this how to attract and hire rockstar staff session is one of about 70 presentations and, and, and topics that, that we give. We have a lot of tools and quite a big arsenal of business systems that we implement into the companies of the people that we work with. And if you like this, um, there's a lot more where that came from. So that's that's my advice on how to get the most out of today. Um, really quick on me, I was a painter. Um, I was homeschooled. Never, I actually like only went to school for the last few years of high school. Um, I tried to go to university a whole bunch of times and I was owning, I owned a, a really successful painting company and I just, I don't know if I was young and had an ego, but I just felt like, I don't know why I'm sitting in class here when I can go and sell jobs and push my guys and make money. And so I never, I never quite finished. Um, love to ride my motorcycle. I've done a lot of like very long overland motorcycle trips all around the world. And I've been building this breakthrough Academy thing for the past couple of years. And just last fall, we were announced um, Canada's 16th fastest growing startup, which is really cool. So um, I come from the painting background, but enough on me, let's, let's get into the good stuff here. So I wanna hear from you guys, if you can use the question or the chat box, please. Please tell me um, like what you think makes a really, really awesome employee. Like what do you look for in your staff? What, what are like the intrinsic qualities that someone has that makes them productive, um, that makes them reliable? Like, are there things that you guys look for in particular? And then as well, like kind of think about the same, like on the same note, it's like, what would be possible um, if your whole team was just made up of those types of people, right? Cool, so we got proactive, multitasking skills, interesting. What role would that be for, Jerry? Why, why do you say multitasking skills? Team player, able to solve problems. That's a really good one, Ryan. We're going to talk about that today. Problem solving is probably one of the most important things you can interview for. Um, someone with an, without an ability to solve problems on their own, you know what they're like as an employee? They call you all the time. And you're just like, can you please figure it out? Because I got other stuff to deal with. Um, highly motivated, awesome, can work through problems. That's another one on, on, on problem solving. 
attitude, positive person. These are great. Thinking outside the box. Cool. That's awesome. So I, I appreciate you guys sharing that stuff. Um, like I just keep that front of mind. Okay. Because like I, what I've asked you for is like, what do you look for in an employee? Meaning what, what, um, like very intrinsic personality traits do they bring to the table that, that make them successful within your company in the point of recruiting and interviewing on a very fundamental level is getting good at looking for those things, right? Like, first of all, knowing what they are, which is why I asked. Now let's talk about how do we go find them out there in the job market. So, um, cool. That's, that's a great transfer in. Um, <clears throat> when we, when I like think about recruiting as a process, square one guys is something that we call an ideal candidate profile. So an ideal candidate profile is, is very simply just an organized brainstorming of like the type of person that we want to go out and hire and getting really clear on that long before any like recruiting tactics or interviews are done. Okay. So it's like, Let's write this down. Let's think through it. Let's talk to our team. Let's get clear on like who the person is before we go out and look for them. Now that might seem like super like duh, like obviously like that's you don't even need to say that. It's it's so clear. But you would not believe how many people actually completely skip this step and they just they get busy. They need to hire and they just throw an ad on Craigslist or Indeed or wherever and they hire the first person that shows up relatively sober and relatively on time like you're hired and let's let's go with it so uh, again in a, like an ideal candidate profile what it is is it's like this is the criteria against which you're going to interview right so it's like it's like this avatar it's like this it's not a person yet it's like it's just something in your mind's eye you have an image of this person and you know what they're what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what their values are, what are their skill sets, what type of experience do they have, what kinds of companies have they worked for in the past. You can even get as specific as like what what part of town do they live in, what kind of like sports do they follow. Like you can get it, it really really good recruiters get extremely advanced on these like these profiles of who they're looking for. We have some templates that make it super easy to start going through that. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but the other side of this coin that you want to think about besides like what, what you want in an employee is what, what do they want in an employer? Have you guys ever thought of that? Is that something you like you've ever like, you know, have you just like stopped thinking about yourself and your business for a second and thought about what does this like potential employee want from me? What do they want from this job? What excites them? How do they want to feel about their work? What are their goals? What are they, what are they afraid of? What kind of baggage are they carrying from their last boss or their la the last company that they worked for? So you want to really get clear on what both of these things are. You want to know your like their 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 uh, what their profile is, so you know what you're looking for, and you also want to know what they are looking for in you. And the most important reason you want to know why, or sorry, what they're looking for is so that you can sell to those needs. If you know that someone is like, hey, you know what? I just I want like I want to fairly I want to work outside I want to work with my hands and I worked for a company for a long time that just sucked I never got paid on time and I just I just want to I just want a steady paycheck that's something that you can then sell to that specific person and get them excited about joining your team so this is like the ideal candidate profile just like I want to lay that out conceptually this is what um, this is what one looks like. It's, this is for like a crew leader position. I'm going to send out in the downloads a whole bunch of uh, like, a, like a template that makes the build out of this actually a little bit easier. So you usually have like a description of the role that you're looking for, have, have the actual like character traits that you're looking for listed out. Um, one thing that we like to do is interview some people that have been very good at this job in the past. So if you're looking for a crew leader, for example, and you've had some really awesome crew leaders in the past couple of years, go buy them dinner and be like, hey, why are you so good at your job? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Why do you like this job? And get to know that on a personal level and it will give you a whole bunch of insight into what to look for out there in the rest of the marketplace. So that is like ideal candidate profiling, super, super simple concept, something that gets missed 
all the time. Okay. So ideal candidate profile number one. Now moving on, what you want to do with this is you're going to eventually turn this into um, a job posting. Okay. So a job posting really quickly, just to make sure we're on the same page. This is like the job ad. This is like uh, it's something that get, gets posted online. Um, most of them, if you go onto Craigslist or you go to LinkedIn, you go to you go anywhere where like jobs are posted right now. Most of them are misspelt. They suck. They don't sound appealing at all. They're just like uh, labor wanted, fifteen dollars an hour. We work hard, eight hours a day. I hope you like hard work please apply below and there's like there's been no effort made into making it sound good there's no salesmanship there's no like marketing spin and this is where a lot a lot of people fall down and so I hear you know I work with my members like all the time and this is something that they they gripe about and complain about I posted an ad I didn't you know I only had really bad resumes come in and or or I had none at all and then I'm like okay well let's let's peel back the layers here and, and you know see what's going on and then I asked them to pull out their, their job posting and it just it's terrible like there's been no effort put into it to make it sound good so we have like a bit of a formula um, to follow that I think just makes this a, a little bit simpler so if you're if you're like staring at a blank page and don't really know how to start and make this look good here's here's what I think works you want to have a like a title that is is catchy and it engages like the attention. It catches the attention of the types of people that we're wanting to work with. I, I have an example I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, have a short company profile that again sells your business as like an awesome place to work. Hey, we're family owned. We've been around for 20 years. We're local. There's benefits. We have staff parties. Like I don't know. Like find out what your employees like. And, and put that in the ad. And if you have no idea, fake it till you make it because this is something that is really, really critical to have. If there's no information about the company or the history of it or their values or what they're all about, that's not really something that I'm like, I would be interested in interacting with if I was looking for a job. Have a job description. So like describe the role. You don't need to be incredibly detailed, but do a bit of like a high level overview, maybe a short paragraph on what the position um, you're hiring for entails and what's involved. Again, do that in a way that makes it sound good. Have a clear list of skills and requirements that then qualifies out some people, right? So if there are indeed some things, like there's some some experience or some training or skill sets that they need to have, I would I would list that out. Deal breakers. Okay, deal breakers are very simple things that you can usually figure out over the phone that make this person ineligible for the role. So I'll give you an example. I, in my first year owning a painting company, I hired this guy. He was a basketball player. He was like six foot, he was like six foot five, super athletic, super fit. And I'm and I hired him. I'm like, oh my God, this guy is gonna paint so many houses and make me so much money. And I was like, you know, we, first day was I was training him. He shows up on site. He's got his steel-toed boots. He's got his white little uniform on. Every looks, you know, we're all excited. It's great. Okay, awesome. Let's go, Chad. It's time to start painting. Grab your paint can over there and go up the ladder. And he like looks at me. Is he? He's like, he's like ladder. You didn't say anything about ladders. And I thought we were painting like bedrooms. Like I was going to be on the ground the whole time. I was, and I like I own an exterior painting company. I was like, you're literally going to spend seventy percent of your summer at heights, on roofs, on ladders. And he walked off site. Couldn't work with them. So that was like, that was a deal breaker. And I probably could have figured that out in 30 seconds over the phone. Hey, do you, are you terrified of heights or like you, you decent with that? Right. I don't know what the deal breakers are for your position. Maybe it's a driver's license. Maybe it's uh, owning a car. Um, you know, it's different for everyone. But if, if that is something, if you have deal breakers, those should go on the ad and they should be brought up very, very quickly. Um, Okay, so compensation, sometimes you want to do it, not necessarily, not necessarily always. Um, I would say for like hourly roles in a really tight labor market, it's probably good to post. For someone that gets paid by the year and they're on salary, that would be something probably to discuss um, over the phone or in person in an interview. Um, yeah, Nancy, I see you have a question there. Will the handout of the presentation be available? Yes, the slides are going to be made available and all of these like accompanying templates and 
and like tools and stuff I'm going through as well, that will all be available for download as well. I'll post that at the end. Um, okay, so a clear call to action. This is like what you, this is like the footer of the job ad and it just gives someone incredibly clear instructions about what to do if they're interested in applying. If this sounds like you, send your resume and cover letter to info at xyzcompany.com. That's a, that's a pretty clear call to action. Some people miss this and they're like, hey, for more information, visit our website. Or if, if, you know, if you want to call, like dial this number. And it's not like it, it's, it's not super directive and it doesn't make the candidate feel like very clearly like they are moving forward in this recruiting process, like they're actually applying for it. So you just want to make sure that that is crystal clear. Um, if you have any questions about that, let me know. I can give you a few more examples of what a good call to action is. I want to show you an example of what, what this looks like when it's done well. Okay. So a job posting for a job site manager. Here we go. Grow your skills as a job site manager. There's a title that captures the attention. Are you looking for large growth? Are you looking for a career with large growth opportunities like working with working and leading people? Uh, if so, this could be for you. So we've chosen this title and this subtitle guys, we've chosen that very clearly based off of the ideal candidate profile because we know the type of person we want is looking to develop their managerial and leadership skills. So that's something the right kind of person is going to respond to. They'll be like, oh, that does sound like me, right? That is something I want to like get better at. Whereas someone that doesn't want that or is interested in just like an hourly wage and doesn't want to progress, they don't really care about this. Okay. There's a company profile. Again, we've made it sound good. We're a lead, we're a leader in the exterior painting market, specialized in high-end homes, high performance culture, love bringing awesome people together. I know this stuff, I know it seems like kind of cheesy and like, do I need to do it? Yes, you do. It matters. When people are reading through hundreds of job ads a day and they're looking for a new position, stuff like this stands out. Uh, have a description of the duties. Again, do it in a way that sounds good. Skills and requirements, compensation, because it's an hourly role, and then how to apply at the bottom. So that's like, this is like, I'll send this out as a, just as an example. You guys can then build your own with this little handy template that just gives you sort of a fill in the blanks system here. Okay. So those will both come out of this webinar. Guys, if your job postings on like, that are up there online right now, if they suck, um, it's, it's affecting your ability to find good people. I, I promise. So take some time and think about that. Reflect on what you have up there right now. And if there's room for improve it, Im improvement, do it. Okay, cool. That is how to build a job posting lightning quick. Um, now, you've got this great, sexy sounding job. Where do we post it? Okay. The short answer is everywhere. You want to get this as visible as humanly possible. So I would be posting this on Craigslist. I know it's a bit of a mixed bag. It's a crapshoot for sure. There's, you're going to get a lot of bad applicants. You do get some diamonds in the rough every once in a, every once in a while. I, I, here in Canada, which is where I live, we have a very, very big online job board called Kijiji. There's Indeed. There's LinkedIn. There's Glassdoor. There's ZipRecruiter. If there's any other websites that you guys are using that are good, feel free to post them in, in the questions or the chat box. I'd love to hear what else you guys are using. But basically, like, get this in front of as many people as possible, okay? Here's another just like pro tip, pay for top ads, pay for sponsored ads, pay for banner ads. I don't care how much it costs. If it's 200 bucks for the week to get this at the top of the pile so that it's seen by as many people as possible, do it. Like throw some money at the problem. It, 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 you know, your, your nicely written ad with photos and a great description, it's, it's worth nothing to you if it's getting pushed down to the bottom of the pile um because you're too cheap to have it sit at the top so that's just like super super simple advice that i would really encourage you to follow here's another thing that i want you to do to start to generate applicants so you have these passive sources right they're sitting online and they're hopefully being seen you can also get a little more proactive with your recruiting as well and so what i encourage well, this is actually something that we do like breakthrough academy we do this at least twice a year to hire for roles we also um, have our members do this at a few different times of the year. Spring is an awesome time when things are starting to ramp up. Um, sit down with your team, 
on a Friday. Okay, have them at the office or have them at your home or take them to a restaurant. Um, get everyone there. Get them a meal. Maybe have a uh, get some beers. Just keep it kind of casual and what, like explain to them first of all the kind of role that you're looking for. So get that ideal candidate profile that you've made. Get it up on a you know on a slide or on a projector and say, hey, this is the kind of person that we're looking for. This is the role that we're hiring for. You got you know explain to your team like this person is incredibly important. As you remember, last season we were all very overworked because we didn't have a, let's say, a project manager in place. We really need this person this year for our growth, for our profitability, for our sanity. This person in no way threatens your guys' positions. That's really important to make them feel safe in helping you out because if your staff feel like this person that they're hiring might be their replacement, they're not really going to really help you find anyone. Okay, so you have the ideal candidate profile, job posting, you talk to your team, have them open up their mobile devices or their laptops or their iPads, whatever, and you're going to give them a templated message. And the message would be something along the lines of, hey, so-and-so, hope you're doing really well. Um, not sure if you know this, but I work for this really awesome company called Breakthrough Academy. We are hiring a new project manager this year. Um, it's actually a super cool role. I've attached the job posting below. Breakthrough Academy is a really awesome company to work for, for all of these benefits. If you know anyone that sounds like they might be a fit, please send their name my way, and there, there could be like a $500 hiring bonus in it for you, something like that. The, the verbiage of that can change, but overall, it's just like, hey, how are you doing? We're, we're hiring. This is the position. If you know anyone, um, send them our way, and then have like a call to action and, and some you know, some potentially financial uh, compensation for doing that. And if you send it to 50 people and let's say the 10 people on your team send it to 50 people, that's like 550 direct messages that are getting sent out through Facebook to people in your network. So it's not, you're not asking them to post a status. You're asking them to send a direct message through messenger to people in their network. You would not believe the results that come from this. It's going to be like, Someone's going to be like, oh, my little brother. And you'll be like, oh, like, I can't believe I didn't think of that person. Obviously, he'd be such a good fit. Like, People sort of come out of the woodworks when you do this. Um, and they're often much better qualified because these prospects are much closer to home. They're, they're much like they're, they're within your own little network. So that's a, if you have any more questions about that, that's a, actually a really, really good, simple tactic. And it works super well. Can I send it as a script? Uh, sure. Yeah, I, if you want to stay on after surgery, we can like write one. I have a few that I've that I've used over the years that are super helpful. I can literally go into my Facebook and just copy a message from somewhere because I I do it every couple months and and give that to you. Um, yeah, I'm I'm glad you like that. Um, okay, let's assume that you've done all this. You've posted your stuff on Craigslist and Kijiji and Indeed and ZipRecruiter, and you're getting applicants and they're flooding in. That's a good thing. That's a good problem to have. If you have like 100 applications, that's a good, good thing because you want as many as possible so that you can be picky. Now, when that happens, it's pretty easy to lose track of your, of your applicants. So I would encourage you to have a few different inbox folders set up like these on the left here. So applicants converted are people that you've called and you've set up into an interview. We don't know if they're hired yet, but they're, they're resumes that we liked and we've engaged with and we've like moved them to the next step, whatever that is. Applicants rejected. <laughs> These are for like the misspelled, typoed, like absolutely horrendous, useless resumes that look like they were made by a Neanderthal. We don't want to talk to those guys. We have limited time. Not interested. Thanks, but no thanks. Those go into apps rejected. Apps to call. This is the folder that where you put people. You're like, hey, I, I don't know if you're a fit yet, but it looks like I'm, it looks like you're at least worth my time to spend 20 minutes on the phone with you. Um, and that that's where everyone goes for that category. It's the reason you want to do this is because you guys are busy, and I know that you're gonna end. You're not gonna like 
you know, carve out an hour to sit down and go through all your applicants, you're probably going to do this in the lineup to Starbucks or while you're waiting for your materials at the, at your vendors or while you're like on a job site. So if you can just have a place to quickly like slot people, you're, what, what happens if you don't do this is you read through resumes four times. You're like, wait, who's Brian? Did I like him or is he garbage? I can't remember. So this is just a really good, like simple thing to do and makes life a lot easier. Um, okay. Now, where are we at here? You've built an ideal candidate profile. You've turned that into a job posting. It's gone online. You've had some applicants come in. Now it's time for that like initial phone call. You don't know if they're a fit yet, but you kind of want to start to feel them out a little bit. This conversion call is incredibly important. It might be, this might be the most important thing that we kind of talk about in this session. And I'd be very curious for those of you at your keyboard right now, when you do these calls, how long are they? It's like type in zero to five minutes or five to 10 or 10 plus minutes. Like I, I or may, maybe it's longer. I don't know, but I'm just like, I'm very, I always want to get a, get a feel for how long you guys spend doing these, these phone calls. 20 to 30 says Michelle. Awesome. What else? There you go. Okay, good. That's pretty good. You guys are spending a good, a good chunk of time. I am a big proponent of like at least 20 minutes, nothing wrong with 30 plus minutes. Sometimes these can take as long as an hour. Now, it depends on the role. Like you obviously want to spend more time with people that are, that are applying for like more like heavily leveraged roles. Um, but the reason that this call is so important is this is the prospect's first human interaction with the company. And there's a lot of assumptions and influence and like a, a lot of stuff happens in that, in that first interaction. This is from, from your perspective as the hirer guys, this is your first opportunity to sell, to sell this person into the role that they're hiring for. And I'm just going to like share one really important golden nugget that's probably obvious, but you need to be reminded of it. The people that you want on your team, they have four interviews this week. You are not the only option that they have. And so getting good at like connecting with people, understanding them on a human level, describing your company and the role in a way that sounds appealing and engaging. That's, this is where this happens is on this conversion call. Okay. And if you, just another question for you guys, use the chat box again. How many of you have ever been no showed for like, if you ever just like you've set up and you've set up a, an interview and this person, you are the one offering them the job and they have the gall to not like to not show up. Yeah, it happens. It's like, it's like super, it's super demoralizing. You're like, I literally look like such a loser right now. I'm sitting in Starbucks or wherever. And this guy is not, I've carved out an hour of my day to, to hang out with this person. They've no showed me. It sucks. So, um, the, the, honestly, if that's happening, guys, a lot of that has to do with this conversion call. You're, you're not, you're not doing, you're, there's something missing. You're not doing this properly. I have another template for this. So I'm actually going to leave the slide because um, it the, the template covers all this and this is going to be sent out in the downloads conversion call. So I'm just going to pull this up here. This is like, you could call this a script. Okay. But I kind of like scripts because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And I don't, you know, it's it just it, anything to make life simpler is good. So, um, I would print out a bunch of these and have them and like actually write down notes on it when you make these phone calls. Um, you call the person, bring, bring, hello, hey, how's it going? Do you have a few minutes to chat? Um, you know, I'm calling from XYZ company. I saw that you applied for our project manager role. We'd love to just like talk to you a little bit about it if you have some time. Great. First thing that you do, guys, connect with them on a personal level. Like you, like, you know, when you go and do an estimate or you're meeting a potential client, like all of us are pretty familiar with the idea of building rapport, making some, some small talk, just like lubricate the conversation by getting to know them on a personal level. How are you? Who are you? Tell me about your story. Tell me about your current situation. Are you working right now? Are you in school right now? Are you in like transition? Are you coming back from traveling? Or have you been unemployed for six years living in your mom's basement? Like, like get to feel that stuff out early on. Um, 
then you want to like just start to ask them some questions about what they're looking for. So remember in the ideal candidate profile, we talked about how important it is to like understand the, the, the prospects needs. This is a, this is your chance to start to understand that more. So like what kind of company are you, are you looking to work for? What kind of companies have you worked for in the past? Have you had jobs that you really, really liked? Have you had jobs that you really, really disliked? What are you good at? What are your strengths? What are your skills? Um, what are you not good at? What are you not interested in doing? Who were your last two bosses? This is a, such a good question. Who were your last two bosses? How would they rate your performance on a scale from one to 10 when we talk to them? Are you gonna talk to them? Maybe, probably not, probably not. But it, you, know, you might call a reference if it's a really high level role, but for the most part, you probably won't. Do they know that? Definitely not. Um, so this is just a really good way to feel out. If they're giving you like an eight or a nine or a 10, that's probably pretty good. If they're giving you like a six or a seven, that's realistically like a two. So, you know, take notes on this stuff, capture this. Um, this, th these are, these are really good cues for the conversation that you're then going to have in the interview. What you want to do after that is give them a job helicopter tour. So this is a high level sort of overview or survey of the of the job that they're applying for right um, you're going to be a project manager these are going to be responsibilities this is who you'll be working with this is the training you're going to receive these are the hours like just like you know again make it sound good like sell the crap out of this position make it sound amazing um, talk about your deal breakers the end of this call so you're now at the 20 25 30 minute mark this is really really important again for the people that have been no-showed you need to be really, really clear about what you want. Give your prospects an opportunity to impress you. So what I mean by that is like, like put them in a position to succeed. A lot of people like to be like super shady and be like, yeah, I don't like dress however you want. And like, like they kind of like think that they're going to like learn something about the prospect by not giving them clear information and somehow like how they show up is going to inform them more. And I'm not really a big fan of this approach. So the way that I set up an interview is I tell them exactly what I want. I say, "Hey, uh, uh, hey, Christopher, I'm really like I enjoyed this conversation a lot. Um, I'd love to take this to the next step, which is going to be an in-person interview. I don't obviously know yet if if you're a fit for this, but um, that's kind of what the interview is for. So I'd love to meet on Saturday. Do you have time on Saturday? How about 10 a.m.? Okay, 10 a.m. Awesome." We're gonna meet at the Starbucks on Third Avenue. The interview starts at 10. So if you could be there like a couple minutes early so we can get settled and get a drink and get a table, that would be awesome. It is an interview, so please do dress professionally. Um, you don't need a suit and tie, but like please no sweatpants. Like just like please do treat it like an interview. Um, again, that's 10 a.m. on Saturday. It'll be about an hour long. Um, think about some questions that you have for us. Check out our website. Um, read a little bit about us and I'd love it if you came some came with some questions for me and yeah we'll, we'll meet on Saturday at 10 sound good great okay so I just I kind of made that off off the top of my head but like the key things there is like you're you're giving them a ton of direction you're telling them exactly what you want to need it sounds like you've done this before which is good and you're you're kind of put, you're putting them in the best possible position to to impress you which is what you want um, so I, I would just like, if you're, if the tail end of your, of these conversion calls are a little bit loose or you're not super focused or what happens a lot of the time, a lot of the time it drives me crazy. And if you're, if you're guilty of this, like we should talk, but you'll do, you'll do like a conversion call, like in between, like while you're driving and you're like, um, let's meet, let's meet Saturday. I think like 10 ish, you know, the Starbucks downtown, I think it's on third. Yeah. Let's do that Starbucks on, on sa Saturday around 10. I got to run though. I'm just, I'm, I'm pulling up to a job site. I'll see you on Saturday. Okay. Bye. Like if you do some version of that, that's why people are not showing up for you. Cause it doesn't really sound like you're, um, you're super focused or you're, you kind of know what you're doing there. It's a little sloppy. Another like quick tip. Actually, I guess I'll cover this. I'll cover this interview. I'm going to say that tip for a second when we get into interviewing. Okay. That's the conversion call. The point of that guys is to get a feel for who they are. Make sure that they're obviously worth you sitting down with. Like do the things on their resume fit with what you need to the way that they, does the way that they talk sound like someone that you want to work with. 
you're not going to know if they're a perfect fit, but you are going to know if, if it's even worth your time. If, if you're a business owner or like a high level manager and you're on this webinar, you don't have like a, an abundance of time to waste on, you know, less than amazing people. So be picky with these conversion calls. And when you meet someone that sounds really, really good, make them feel wanted. This is like, again, going to the salesmanship. One of my tips for interviewing guys, when you interview, if you have like a beautiful, nice office with a nice boardroom and nice desks and windows and it looks good, interview them there. If you, like most people, have like a messy office or it's a home office and there's shit everywhere, don't do it there. Go to like, go to a nice restaurant, like make, like the, for the good candidates, like make them feel desired. Take them out for lunch, buy them a meal, Okay. It's a really, really simple thing, but like the way that you present, the way that you posture yourself as a company, that is something that prospects pick up on big time. Okay, where are we at? We've done ideal candidate profile, job posting, turn that into some applicants, call the applicants, and now you're going to sit down with the good ones. When we do behavioral interviewing, okay, there's essentially two main things that you're looking for, okay? The first thing is workability. Does this person seem like someone I want to spend time with because I'm going to be spending 40 hours a week plus like with this person in my world, okay? It doesn't matter how skilled or how good at a given role someone is. If they're just a dick and you don't enjoy them, don't hire them. Has anyone ever done that? Like I'm just like if you if you have like fallen prey to this trap, you have someone that's incredibly skilled They've got a long resume. They have the experience that you want, but they're kind of a jerk and you hire them. What's, what's the outcome of that? What ends up happening? They don't, they don't last a super long time is, is, is what happens. They're, they're good. They paint circles around your staff or they, they do, you know, they, they were the, they're the fastest person on the crew, but they're, they're just like an absolute misery to work with. That's not worth it. I'd rather have someone that is like slightly less skilled, maybe a little slower, needs more training, but like they're a total gem and an absolute dream to, to hang out with. So that's the workability thing. And one sort of just really simple anecdote I always say is like it, the beer and barbecue test. Would you want them to come over to your house for a beer and a barbecue? Or would you be like, ah, eh, maybe don't invite that guy. Okay. If, if the answer is no, like you don't want to work with them. Okay. Super simple. Moving on, now it's like the that the workability is basic, but to get this to get a little more like specific around what kind of person you're looking for, you interviewing is about like identifying specific innate qualities inside someone. Okay? There's strengths that they have that make them suited for the role that you're interviewing for. Not just like, hey, you're a good guy and you work hard, right? That's kind of assumed, but there's like specific things that they're very, very good at. So in BTA terminology, we call those preferences and abilities, and I'm going to introduce 10 of them in a couple minutes here, and then we'll walk through interviewing. One other thing to note as we go through this interviewing process, all questions are retroactive, okay? We're not really interested about like you know, what someone brings to the table or the promises that they can make or the commitments they're going to make to us. Like that's all very easy to BS. But if you're asking someone, hey, tell me about a time when you've exhibited this specific trait, that's way harder for someone to BS their way through. So a lot of people that get frustrated with like they've done interviews, but then they still have made bad hires. A lot of that has to do with the types of questions that they're asking. And much like that conversion call form that I showed you a minute ago, we have a very robust interviewing process that I'm going to give away for free um, in this webinar as well. But first, the, the, the preferences and abilities. Um, okay, so let me get out a PowerPoint, preferences and abilities. So what I was saying before, these are like the specific innate qualities that people either have or they do not have. These cannot, I can't, these cannot be trained. They just have them or they don't have them. These are like, it's a function of like kind of just how they came out, how they were born and like their childhood and how they were raised. So I'm going to go through these in a second. Okay. The first one here is tenacity. So tenacity is the preference to overcome challenges through pure hard work. And this is, this is like the guy who is just like gutsy, hard worker, long hours, hot days, doesn't care, never complains. 
super, super valuable to have on job sites. No matter what the problem is, it's like, no worries, I'll just work harder. Okay, so that's tenacity. You know it when you see it. Attainment, a little different. Attainment is not necessarily tenacity, but it has to do with like the like someone's ability to be strategic around the way that they approach a goal or a problem. So attainment is like, very simply put, the preference to set and hit goals. Someone with a high level of attainment looks at a project and they're able to break it down into smaller chunks and like allocate like like um, like deadlines to the to the each piece. So they walk up to like I'm a painter, so I use painting terminology. Someone with high attainment would walk up to a, a house and be like, okay, look at that. it's 5,000 square feet. We're doing the walls. We're doing the soffits. We're doing the windows. We're doing the trim. Okay, so we need to have all the prep done today. By tomorrow night, we need to have all of the first coat done on the siding. And the next day, we need to have second coat done on the siding and the first coat on the trim. And like, they're able to actually like, build a plan that they can then try and execute. That's attainment. It's different. It's different than tenacity. Really, really important. Uh, it's important in managerial roles or anyone that's leading other people. Problem solving. This came up a whole bunch when, when we kind of transferred in the beginning here. It's the ability to find solutions and problems. Um, it's, sorry, the ability to find solutions to problems and look at challenges in a positive attitude. Precision is like attention to detail, right? It's, it's someone's preference to pay attention to the details and deliver error-free work. Super important in administrative roles. Very, very important for someone that is doing inspections. Values. This is someone's like, like alignment with your company's values. Do they see the world in the same way as you? Would they make the same decisions as you if they were in the same situation? Instrumental. Okay, this is the ability to come across as highly competent and presentable. Where might that be important, guys? Where might the ability to come across as highly competent and presentable be very, very important in your business? I'll give you a hint. Your sales guys and anyone that is client facing, anyone that's dealing with customers needs to have a fairly high level of instrumental. Leadership is their natural preference and if ability, uh, natural, natural preference and if required, the ability to be in the leadership role. Fundamental is someone's ability to stay in pursuit of a goal despite obstacles and challenges. Here's a here's this one's super important. Has anyone had worked with someone who um, you know something goes wrong on the job site, some materials didn't make it, uh, customer changes their mind, uh, or maybe the customer like isn't totally happy and there there was like there there was a deficiency inspection that they didn't pass. So there's there's some sort of delay. Someone with a low fundamental loses it when that happens they like they break they shut down they stop thinking they become emotional they become irrational they stop communicating it's an extremely dysfunctional quality to have on a job site has anyone ever worked with someone like that i feel like i feel like we all have like low fundamental total head case can't ha like <laughs> if you can't stay in the can't handle the heat don't stay in the kitchen right um so that's that's low fundamental um Introspection is someone's preference to objectively view themselves and accurately see their strengths and weaknesses. So what does that mean? It's, is the person coachable? Can they take feedback and be like, huh, you're right. I'm actually not that good at like this given thing and I do need to improve on it. Or are they like, hey man, I've been doing this for 10 years. I know what I'm doing. You do your job. You let me do and and I'll do mine. Right, that would be someone with a very low level of introspection, and it's again super difficult to work with. Okay, skill sets. The last one. This is somebody's ability to complete the job based on their proper education and/or experience. So let me let me just give you a little insight. This is what I see, like when I when I just working with so many companies now. Most people, all they interview for are skill sets. That's it. That's all they think about. Who have you worked for in the past? What types of projects? What kind of experience? What, what tickets do you have? What training do you have? That's it, okay? And they try to, they try to you know, bring people into the business because they, you know, while they, like they, sure, okay, they have, it shows that they might be a good carpenter based on their experience, but you haven't figured out any of their scores in any of these other categories. And what happens is you have these, these, these surprises, right? You hire this guy, looked really good, interviewed really well, and then he, you know, six months later, he's an absolute nightmare. He's 
you know, being rude to your other employees, he's not treating customers well, and he's just like doesn't care at all. You're not interviewing with a wide enough array. You're not you're not like analyzing your people with a wide enough lens, if that makes sense. So I introduce those preferences and abilities to lead you into behavioral interviewing. So now there's an actual process to figure out do does this person have what we need or not? I'm not gonna go full screen. Um so you're sitting down, hopefully in a nice place, and now it's time for the interview. Again, build some rapport, set some purpose and outcomes. This is actually a pretty important step. Hey, we're doing this interview to figure out if we're a fit for each other, right? I like the sounds of you on the phone, really looking forward to this conversation and getting to know you a little bit better. I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of questions. Some of them might even be kind of personal. We're going to get into some stuff and just like have quite a detailed and involved conversation to see if, if like this position will be a fit for you, right? Like make it clear like why you're there. Um, I go over the candidate needs again, right? Like I, I, based on the phone call, I know that this is really important to you. Um, the position that you're hiring for actually has a lot of that in it. So I think this, like you really, really like doing it again, bringing in the salesmanship to your interviewing, talk a little bit about your story, your business, right? Be authentic, be yourself, recap the job helicopter tour, and then we'll get into the actual meat of the interview. So this is like, this is like the cool stuff here. You want to hire, let's say you want someone with tenacity, okay? It's like a lower level, it's a lower level labor role and it's important that someone has, you know, just a really high work ethic. Tell me what, it, tell me about like the hardest job that you've ever, you've ever had, right? It could have been, or the hardest work experience you've ever had. It could have been with another company. It could have been related to your academics in school. Uh, could it could be related to sports? It could have been in like a volunteer experience. I don't really care where it comes from, but tell me about like the hardest work experience that you've ever had. Cool. What was the hardest part of the job specifically? Okay. And what was the hardest day like you experienced? The hardest week? Like the hardest chapter in that time? What was so hard about it specifically? How long did you did you last at this? What did you learn from the experience? In the end, why did you leave? What would you do differently if you were to go back to it? So you see, there's like there's like six or seven layers that we're we're peeling back and figuring out like, does this person have examples of tenacity? The the fundamental premise to this whole thing is that like previous behavior is going to predict future performance. And so you want, you need to see, you don't care like what, if they say that they're, they're going to work hard, that's pretty easy to BS. What you care about is do you have examples of that in the past? And what you will see is someone with tenacity has example after example, after example, after example of times that they have worked hard in the past. Okay. Now you can apply the same logic to like the other things that you may want in a role, right? Maybe it's attainment. Hey, Tell me about a goal that you've set for yourself in the past year. Why was the goal important to you? What was the deadline to achieve the goal? What was the actual like series of steps to the plan that you built to hit the goal? Did you, in the end, what was the end result? Did you hit it? Did you miss it? By how much? What did you learn? Like this is sort of this is behavioral interviewing 101. Now, one caveat, guys, you're gonna go through this and you're gonna go, oh, tenacity. I definitely want someone that works hard. Oh yeah, attainment. You definitely want someone that can hit goals. Oh yeah, I'd really like to have a problem solver. Oh, precision. Yep, definitely want someone that can pay attention to details. Oh, uh, values, of course. I want someone with the same values. Instrumental. Yeah, I'd love to have someone that's good with customers. Leadership. Oh, that would be awesome. And like, you're gonna go through all this and be like, yeah, I want all this stuff. That person does not exist. Nobody has all of this stuff. Okay. What, so when you're going to interview, it's really, really important. This is why we do the ideal candidate profile to connect this back with what we started with. It's really, really important to know which like preferences and abilities really, really matter for a given role. It's not going to be all of them. It's probably four to five, maybe six. Um, so if you're, don't interview someone for all of this stuff because you, you just, you're just not going to get that person. Does that make sense? Cool. So we do like you know, we spend a lot, lot longer on this, like with our with our members and our clients and the people that we work with actively. But I just I wanted to give you kind of a snapshot on like really basic recruiting and interviewing systems. Everything that we have gone through today is going to be available for download at the end of this webinar. But 
that's that's kind of the basics, right? We did we talk about developing an ideal candidate profile. We turn that into a job posting. We get that job posting in front of as many people as possible. We sort the applicants. We convert the good ones into interviews, and then we interview to see who's the best fit. Okay, so this is like to tie this back into what we started with. This is one piece of a larger business machine, right? Like, what, okay, so when you you let's say you do this perfectly, now you have a bunch of new hires. What's next? Well, then they need to be trained, and for that you need competency models, and you need standard operating procedures, and they need to have a job description and deliverables that they fulfill, and a reporting structure, and like, there's so much other stuff that goes into making this, like, making a thriving, growing business. Um, interviewing is one piece of it. So if you like that, I want to probably keep talking to you guys um i'm just gonna go a little bit more in detail about like what bta does um I, I mentioned at the beginning but this is like a very high level coaching program specifically for trades and construction companies we're working with about 270 entrepreneurs all over north america right now um Everyone that we work with is extremely like-minded, very entrepreneurial. The majority of the businesses that we work with are doing between one and ten million dollars in annual revenue. That's sort of like a, that's sort of like the size of business for whom this stuff starts to really, really make sense. Smaller than that, you probably you're just still flying by the seat of your pants, and this isn't quite exactly what you need yet. It's much bigger than that. And you've probably kind of figured a lot of this stuff out already. But if you're sort of like in that intermediate state, you've got an amazing foundation, you're running an HVAC company or a drywall company or a plumbing company or roofing company, you know, whatever, anything to do with the home services. And you're like, man, I got some great customers. I got some really good employees, but I don't know how to like, I don't know how to get this to the next level. That's that's where we come in. And we've done this a lot of times. We're very, very experienced. We inject an operational system into your company so that it's something that can scale. Okay. The three C's, what that is, it's like a really, really quick way to think about like what we offer. So it's content, it's coaching, and it's community. Let me let me unpack that for a second. Content is like we give you a business in a box, budgeting systems in Excel, job descriptions for your staff recruiting like all the stuff we went through today like it's a very small sample of a much bigger library that we have everything that you would need from a from a documentation standpoint we've built already you put your name on it you put your logo on it make it your own but it's mostly done coaching so you'd get paired up with a coach they get to know you extremely well they set goals with you they do strategic planning with you they meet with you every week and make sure that you're implementing systems and hitting your goals the community piece is like the 270 guys and girls that we work with. Everyone is super, super like-minded, as I said. Like people go through quite an intense vetting process before they, we start to work with them. So, like, there's an incredible group of smart, hardworking trades entrepreneurs that are trying to figure out how to scale their business. And instead of just you doing it by yourself, banging your head against a wall, we're like, hey, there's a whole bunch of other people in the same journey. Why don't you guys connect and chat and see, you know, if you can help each other out? And there's a lot of value that comes from that shared experience. We drive some pretty incredible results. Um, we track our members' numbers very, very closely. I can't show you how we do that right now, but we have a pretty elaborate financial tracking system that we that we implement with every business that we work with, and we see a 43% growth in revenue after 12 months. We also see a 66% growth in net profit, and our, our members are doing this while working less, right? They're, they're spending more time on their hobbies with their families, at the, a regained sense of control, lower stress levels, all that good stuff. So let's do a quick transfer out where I think we're at the top of the hour here. So we're, we're almost completely out of time, but let's just take one minute. And if, you, if you've been on this and you're like, you've, you've pulled out a couple really good gold nuggets, as I said at the beginning, what were those gold nuggets? What, what's, what's one thing you're going to try like on the next phone call that you make or the next job that you hire for? Like, What's one really quick, simple idea that you liked? Go ahead and type that in the, in the questions box because um, I want to hear what's, what's good, what you guys like, what's, what's working for you. Ideal candidate profile is awesome. Refine the conversations. Do in-depth interviews. Yeah, preferences. Cool. Awesome. I'm glad you guys like that. All that stuff is going to be available for download, so please take this stuff and use it. Um, we've spent a lot of time, money, and energy developing this stuff, and now we just like 
want people to use it. So, um, cool. To get these templates, guys, I'm gonna leave PowerPoint again and show you how this works. See this code S L. Oops, S L zero five two one. I'm gonna post that in the in the in the questions right here. Actually, no, I'm gonna go to the chat box and do that. S L zero five two one. That's the code, and you want to go to www.btacademy.com slash surefire. Okay, that's in the chat box. Both of those are in the chat box right now. Go to the chat box, click the link, and it's going to take you to a landing page. And the landing page looks like this. So this is Breakthrough Academy on the top, and then there's Surefire over here. Go, oopsies, why is that happening? Scroll down, put in your download code, which is SL0521, SL0521, your name, your phone number, your email, tell us what time zone you're in, how many employees you have, and then you have a couple options, okay? If you were like, hey, this was really, really great, um, and BTA sounds like a potentially a cool option for me, I'd like to learn more, click send me the templates and I'd like to learn more about Breakthrough Academy. Someone from my team, his name's Brennan, he'll probably call you next week, he's gonna ask you about your business and what you're up to and just get to know you a little bit, maybe tell you a little bit about us, um, and we can kind of get that conversation started. We'd love to chat. If you're like, hey, it's good, I just, want, I just want the templates, you just say, I just want the templates. As well, if you want to find out more info on Surefire, click yes, um, and then just do press like the best time to get a hold of us so we know approximately what time to, to call you, and then click send the templates. Okay, so all that stuff is going to come in a zip folder to you later on this week, and um, I think that's it. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, I'll stay on for a bit. Um, Jenny, I'm not sure if you're still around, but like, you're on, yeah, like, uh, I hope that was good. Okay, cool, you're there. Hope yeah. you guys really like that. Um, I, 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 yeah, love doing this stuff, and I'm, ha I'm happy to chat with any of you a little further if, if this is something that interests you, but otherwise, I'll just say thanks very much, and hopefully talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Benji. That was a really great presentation, and it sounds like everyone on here really learned a lot. And I encourage you to go download these, uh, fill out the form, download all of these templates. They seem really useful, so download them. Another option, um, I'm gonna launch a poll here, and you can just let us know if you'd like to learn more from Breakthrough Academy, if you'd like to learn more from Surefire, or both of us. So I've launched the poll, leave it up for a minute so you all have a minute to answer. But before we end the webinar, I did want to announce our two Google Home Mini winners. And our two winners today are Ashley Nichols and Jackie MacArthur. Congratulations, Ashley and Jackie. Please email marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address and we will get those shipped right out to you. And I want to say another huge thank you to Benji and yeah. thank you all of you for taking the time out of your day to join the webinar and please take a minute to fill out the survey at the end let us know how we did today and if there are any specific topics you'd like to hear about in the future we really love checking out the topics that you suggest when we plan our webinar schedule so let us know if there's anything specific i'm gonna close up this poll now i hope everyone got a chance to answer it if not click that link and go download the forms. Cool. Well, thanks, Jenny. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks to everyone that logged in today. Um, my pleasure, and, and we'll talk to you guys later. Sounds great. Have a great day, everyone.